All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today I want to talk about um, DI boxes, impedance, and a little bit about balanced and unbalanced lines, but uh, primarily about um, ways to use a DI, DI box and um, in conventional and unconventional ways, and um, why we even use them. Um, to get to, before I get into the DI box directly, let's talk about impedance and um, how it relates between the various signals that we're dealing with. In Pro Audio, we're dealing with a, a wide variety of, of signal levels, um, starting from kind of the lowest level will be mic level, which is um, extremely low level, uh, minus 60 dB or um, more or less. Then we've got kind of the instrument level, which would be like what comes off of a guitar or um, kind of this lower mid-level that is, you know, minus 20 to minus 40 dB. Uh, and these aren't exact numbers, but just, you know, maybe 20 to 40 dB uh, more, 20 to 40 more dB than the mic level stuff. Um, and then we get into kind of the semi-pro line level, which, you know, the minus 10 dB stuff that, um, you know, in home hi-fi runs a lot of that. And then you get into the uh, pro level, which is, you know, plus 4, plus 20, plus 18, and these higher um, pro level. And then beyond that, we get into amplifier levels where we're, um, we're um, you know, spinning out thousands of watts. And we switch to watts there, but that might be plus 40 dB or plus... 50 dB, plus 60 dB, plus 30 dB. So it's, it, it can be related in a, a dB scale. Um, so that's one thing. We have this varying levels from very low to, ver to really high level signals. Um, second of all, or the next thing we can look at is the format in which we transport these signals. We can transport them in unbalanced lines, which would be uh, like a guitar cable with a thin wire down the middle and a shield around the outside, typically quarter-inch connectors, or RCA connectors is another unbalanced um, signal format that's really common. Um, then we also have, for a mic level, for extremely low-level stuff, we get into balance line where we have the two... Um, to the twisted pair of wires inside of a shield to give us some more rejection due to the line balancing. And I've done other video I've done another video on that, so I won't get into it too much. And then for like the real high level stuff, speaker level, we just use a you know a pair of zip cord for home stereo, stereo speakers or a pair of wires, maybe twisted, maybe not or very few twists inside of like an NL4 or an NL8. And we've got these high level uh, signal cables. Um, the next part of this equation, uh, so we've looked at the different various different levels and we've looked at the formats and the methods that we transport these various levels. And then we have impedance and impedance um, is a little more complex or, you know, it, there's a lot of um, misunderstanding around it or just kind of people are like, well, it's complicated. I don't know. I don't, uh, I want to even really worry about it. Um, doesn't matter too much or whatever that is. Um, impedance is interesting. Impedance is, in a way, it's um, the same as resistance, but it's frequency dependent. Um, it's frequency dependent resistance. But for that, I don't want to get real technical on it. I'm going to do another one of my crude kind of uh, practical examples to demonstrate this. It's an imperfect. Actually, I just thought of it today as I was putting this video um, thought together. Um, high impedance is, is a, it typically is a higher voltage and a very low current. And what that means is that it's... Um, uh, I'll get into that in a second. I'll give you a little demo. Um, low impedance is a lower voltage and higher current. And you can transition from high impedance to low, low impedance um, signals. And one of the units that does that is the DI box. I mean, that's its purpose, or one of its purposes, is to transition from a high impedance, high voltage, 
low current signal, unbalanced, and to a lower voltage, higher current, balanced signal. And then the third thing that the DI box does, besides alter the impedance, voltage and impedance, it also balances the line. And the third thing it does, it offers us a, a ground lift switch and some isolation. Um, to give you an example to help you understand impedance, if you if you know electronics, you're into this, um, you got this, then um, yeah, I realize this is not a perfect example, um, but this might help people that don't um, have a full, who want to know it better. Um, high impedance can be looked at like a long, thin stick. Now let's say my hand is creating the signal. It's going, and maybe I had a string on it, and I'm, I'm making um, waves in that string, you know, if you do that, you can see the waves go down. And well, my hand is generating the signal. And if I have a high impedance output, we can think of it as a long thin stick. So even for a small motion in my hand, the stick moves really far. So it's a high voltage, but the current is, the, is kind of the uh, force by which it pushes. So if I have a certain amount of strength here, and this is a long thin stick, it's really easy to stop this from moving. It's not very... Uh, it doesn't have a lot of uh, energy, or a lot of power at the end, or I, power is not the right word for it, uh, a lot of strength or a lot of um, push. Um, but it does move far, and so we've got a lot of voltage, which would be the swing of it, and very little current, which is the amount of push that it would have. Low impedance, conversely, would be like a shorter, uh, heavier stick, and for the same amount of motion in my hand, we don't get near the voltage, we don't get near the amount of displacement at the end, but it's got a lot more power, it's got more energy, it's harder to stop it from moving. Okay, so low impedance is, low impedance outputs are typically lower voltage, higher current, and high impedance outputs are higher voltage, lower current. Now it turns out you can transition from one to the other and the math is current times voltage. So if you have a high voltage, you have a voltage of 10 and a current of one, then you've got a watt, uh, uh, the wattage would be one watt or 10 watts, I'm sorry, one and 10, one times 10, 10 watts. If you have a voltage of one and a current of 10 amps, you can also have 10 watts. Um, the high voltage, low current is a higher impedance circuit, and the lower voltage, high current is a uh, low impedance circuit. All right, so what a DI does is it takes this high voltage, this big swing, and it's almost like, it's like, almost like a, a fulcrum. It takes the big swing on one side, and it's got a pivot point. Maybe let's say it's 10 to 1, for example, then this would move 10 times as much as this. And those transforms, you have a 10 to 1 transform inside of a DI box, then you would get a 10 to 1 uh, transition from a high impedance to a low impedance, from a, uh, a, low, a, high, a low current to a high current output. So a transformer, you could have a 1 to 1 transformer for an isolation, and it does the same thing on either side. And then you can also have splitter transformers that would be multiple sticks attached together. So when you move one, two move on the other side. Uh, you get a little lost to the transformer, but that's pretty much how it works. Um, all right, so that's pretty much the foundation by what we're dealing with here. Um, I'm gonna do another video. I'll um, finish this up in a part two where I'll do some demonstrations with this DI box here and um, some signal levels, and we'll kind of look at um, all the stuff that I just talked about. Cool.